Hey everyone, if you're here for the POW event, if you're signed up on a team and you haven't checked in yet, please come and check in with Martin Wallace here, tall, blonde man in the red t-shirt. Um, we're missing some of our team members. So if you're also just hanging out and wanting to maybe be adventurous and join a team for this event, pitch of the week, come and talk to us as well. We'll start in just a couple minutes. Hello. Hi, everyone. If, uh, if there's anyone here for the Pitch of the Week event and signed up for a team and you haven't signed in yet with Martin, please do so as soon as possible. We're going to get started in just a minute or two. If you haven't signed up and you want to participate last minute style and have the next hour free, please come and talk to us and we'll get you on a team.
Unfortunately, now uh, all the sign up, the sign up thing is moot because this is our last competition before we do the finals next week, which is the winning team from this week and the prior two Wednesdays. But it, still, all the information about this event is at our libguides.uta.edu forward slash pow. Twitter handle, if you like to hashtag, is hashtag pow UTA. Our live stream right now is facebook.com forward slash UTA libraries. And then for voting, if you want to vote here watching or if you're watching from afar, uh, we'll be live, live streaming our uh, voting from pollev.com forward slash Martin Wallace, no E, 439. That's P-O-L-L-E-V dot com forward slash M-A-R-T-I-N-W-A-L-L-A-C 439. Also, the live uh, broadcast today will be recorded and archived and posted on our YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash UTA library. So for you guys, who whoever wins today, you can go back if you hadn't seen the prior two weeks and see what your competition is for next week. Fun. All right. So anyone who subscribes to the YouTube channel will be alerted when the video is posted. I believe the first at least the first episode's on there now. First two? Great. Okay, now we're going to create the prompt. So each table, <coughs> excuse me, has a stack of cards. This, each stack has a different theme. It's either going to be a discipline, a piece of equipment, or material. That's what the prompt is going to be made of. So guys, look through your cards. You can, I mean, don't look through them. You're going to pick one. You can pick from the top, treat it like a deck of cards. You can pick from the top or the middle. You're just going to pick what it's going to be, and that's going to create our prompt. And your prompt has to contain all three of these elements. Okay, so our discipline is math. All right. Math is pretty much in everything. What is our equipment? Whoa. Vacuum molding mashing? Moshing? It's, it says M-A-C-H-I-N-G. Vacuum molding mashing. M-A-C-H-I-N-G. Oh, it's a typo. I was thinking it was like maybe machining, if that's a thing. Not sure. But I think it's, we're clear now. It's vacuum molding machine. And our material. Our material is rubber bands. Interesting. Math. Vacuum molding machine and rubber bands. Don't get started Googling yet, because we can see you. You can't get started until the 20 minute timer starts. All right, so your prompt needs to include all three things. All three items. Think of it like chopped, in the, the basket ingredients. Does anybody watch chopped? If you don't include an element, an ingredient, you get chopped. Math, vacuum molding machine, and rubber bands. What are you going to do with that? I'm excited to find out. All right, so there's the prompt on the board. You can refer to it if you need to, when you need to. Our 20-minute timer is going to start very, very soon. And while you're working, I'll introduce you guys, do some trivia with our lively crowd. And uh, we'll go from there. Is everybody ready? Does anybody have any questions before we get started? Yeah? Yeah, so that's, that's the, the essence of the whole um, pitch, whatever idea you come up with. If it's an invention, then that's it. If it's a, if it's a business, you create that as well. Cool? All right, guys. You have a question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. 20-minute timer starts now. <laughs> Exciting. So our first team here is the Killer Cyborg Beatles. We have some fun names that um, are 
creative team came up with. That's what the trivia is based off as well. I've been doing some fun internet learning with these. Um, but our killer cyborg Beatles team is comprised of Candace Cantwell, who is a junior business management major, also minoring in accounting. Prathamesh Dabolkar is a freshman mechanical engineering major who minors in aerospace engineering. And a last minute volunteer, Abel Verdi, is an architecture major who is a junior here at UTA. The killer cyborg Beatles, you guys, give them a round of applause. Yeah, thank you. So I've got some candy and some trivia. I'm gonna ask the trivia, give it your best shot. Even if you're wrong, I'll still give you candy. So here's some killer cyborg trivia. Beatles, I mean, killer cyborg beetles. Drone beetles, did you guys, have you heard of this? Drone beetles or cyborg beetles? I had not. Martin Hat, yes. All right, so engineers out of, from what two universities are creating robots out of insects? Does anybody know where engineers are creating robots out of insects? I didn't know either. It's Nanyang Technological University in Singapore and the University of California, Berkeley. They, the engineers there are, uh, instead of creating robots that move like insects, which is happening at different labs all over the country, they are showing that it's possible to control the actual insects themselves. <sighs> which is crazy, I think, but they're doing it. Uh, so the next, I guess nobody gets candy for that, but be bold, be brave, raise your hand, take a guess, take a look. It's on a book or the web. What two things do the engineers use to make it possible to develop a living machine whose flight and walking gait can be wirelessly controlled? What two things? Just take a guess. What two things do the engineers use to make it possible to develop a living machine whose flight and walking gait can be wirelessly controlled? You want to guess? What is, what, what's your guess? Uh, Bluetooth and or Wi-Fi. Well, I guess that's kind of in, maybe can be in the electrodes portion. Arduino, no. No Arduino, but the answer, I'll give you some candy. The answer is electrodes and tiny electronic backpacks. They actually put the tiny backpacks on the beetle and control them. And they make them fly, like they're turning them into drones. This world is crazy. You want chocolate? You don't want any candy? All right, well, thank you for trying. I appreciate that. It's a crazy world we live in. What, does anybody know what the average, this is just like a general Beatles, not the band, trivia question. What is the average lifespan of a beetle? I'm think uh, there's two different species. I'm thinking of the bigger, like hard shell, kind of crazy species. Anyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Sunday Phillips. It is three to six months. What kind of candy would you like? You want like a sweet? I'll bring it to you, or like a chocolate. Sweet. Okay. Martin will deliver it. You did guess right. That's a good guess. It's three to six months. And uh, studies are showing, as they're studying this whole thing, as they're doing it, that there is no harm or stress done to the beetles when they're putting the tiny electronic backpacks on them. So don't worry. The beetles are fine, and they only live for six months, and then they're dead. Bye. Okay. Team two, the Beardy McBeardo faces. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> all right, Cynthia Ochoa is here um, um, on my right, your left. She is a junior communications major who minors in broadcasting. And Karam Khalil over here is a junior operations management major who minors in real estate. That's correct, right? Awesome. And Whitney Adindu is a freshman nursing major. The Beardy McBeardo faces. Give him a round of applause. 
Yeah. Thank you. Everybody likes applause. So I didn't know what Beardy McBeard face was or what beardos are. That's what populated the trivia for this. So that was also some fun internet learning. Does anybody know who Beardy McBeard is? Right, pretty obscure. <laughs> who is Beardy McBeard? Does anybody know? Does anyone want to guess? Who is Beardy McBeard? You don't know who Beardy McBeard is? Well, this is actually a combination of Beardo and Beardy McBeard trivia. Beardy McBeard is a cycling photographer and all around bike enthusiast out of Sydney, Australia, known for getting amazing shots of cycling events and communing with the fans of the sport all over the globe. He's apparently very well known and loved. But if you see cycling shots from like crazy aerial angles, that's from Beardy McBeard. Beardy McBeard. Also, having to do with beards and outdoor sports, a beardo, which is the image that you see on this sign here, that's a beardo. <laughs> Does anybody know what that is? It's a beard hat, complete with the beanie on top connected to the beard on the bottom. And it was invented to w keep the face warm during skiing and also be a little cheeky and entertaining. Who's that guy flying down the slopes with the beard? Oh no, he's got a beard O on. <sighs> yep. The <laughs> I'm gonna just go out on a limb and, and guess that nobody here knows who created the beard O. You might, you might be surprised to learn that that person was Jeff Phillips, a Canadian born winter enthusiast who has a passion for snowboarding. So that's where that came from. He was snowboarding and he was like, my face is cold. I'm gonna knit myself a beard connected to a hat. And the beardo was born. You can buy it on the internet. All right. Does anyone just want candy for like a sugar jolt? Because I'm supposed to be giving out candy with each one of these, but we got no guessers today. All right, cool. So I'm going to introduce team three now, but before I do that, I'm just gonna do a time check, guys. We're down to 12 minutes. 12 minutes and counting is what you have left to finalize your pitch. Now, <laughs> team three is now, uh, I apologize for the slightly crude title of this team. The lucky poop emojis is this <laughs> team three here. I didn't pick the name. But there's actually some fun trivia attached to this. So we have um, last minute volunteer, Philip Ochiang from, uh, he's the bio a junior biology major, Philip Ochiang. Thank you so much for stepping in last moment. And faithful Olaleru. Did I say it right? Yeah. He's a sophomore aerospace engineering major. And they're a team of two working extra hard because everybody else has an extra brain, but I have all the faith in them. The lucky poop emojis, give them a round of applause. So I'm gonna, from here on out, say poo instead of poop, just because it's a little less offensive for me, and maybe you. That's okay, everybody knows the emoji, everybody uses it. So what do people commonly mistake the lucky poo emoji as? Instead of, huh? That's close, frosting is close, and I will give you candy, but it's not exactly right. Does anybody else want to take a guess? Here, you can have some candy. Anyone? What do people mistake the lucky poo emoji? Yes, ma'am. Chocolate ice cream is the answer. <laughs> Just a happy little pile of soft serve is what people think. But it, that's not actually it. It actually is poo. Does anybody know <laughs> where the emoji movement comes from? Probably pretty easy to guess. Where do emojis come from? Who invented them 
and where. Yes, you are correct, Asami. <laughs> you can have some candy. They originated in Japan in the early 90s. We have Japan to thank for so many things, including emojis. So, does anybody know what, and I guess you can, you can probably guess from the title of the team, what is the smiling pile of poo supposed to symbolize? You, I, I, gave you, I gave you a clue in the fact that it's in, basically in the title of the team. What is it supposed to symbolize? What'd you say? Yes, ma'am. You want some more candy? <laughs> it's supposed to symbolize luck. The lucky poo. So here's, here's some backstory, which I found very interesting and did not know. In Japanese, the word for poop, unko, starts coincidentally with the same un, oh, unko, with the same un sound as the word for luck. And there has always existed a long tradition of poo-centric worship in the country. <laughs> Before the digital age, it was still fairly common in Japan to look to deities known as banjo-gami, or privy gods, by keeping figures on top of or underneath the loo. Gold poop charms are popular good luck tokens in Japan, as are sweets that resemble that smiling pile of poo emoji. So, use it for good luck. Someone's like, I have a presentation, I'm really nervous about it. Poo emoji, good luck. Not like, do you have to go to the bathroom, good luck. All right. That one, that one really, we, we nailed it with that one. <laughs> Guys, time check, seven minutes and 39 seconds left. The time flies when you're doing poop emoji trivia, I swear. I'm gonna introduce, introduce our judges now. Take it out of the toilet. I'm sure you were anxious for that to happen. Um, first we have Dr. Raul Fernandez. Oh, I have quite, quite the um, bio for you. Well, why not? You earned it. Dr. Raul Fernandez, right here in the middle, studied mechanical engineering at Virginia Tech and joined the engineering staff at the General Motors Corporation, working in manufacturing, product development, and vehicle instrumentation. He completed his PhD here at UTA, specializing in robotics and fluid power systems. He's currently a professor in practice at UTA's mechanical and aerospace engineering department, where he teaches computer-aided design and the senior capstone design sequence, and continues to work as a practicing engineer. Very impressive! Give him a round of applause. Thank you for joining us as a judge today. All right, right here next to me is Arul Thirumaran. Thank you. She's an intellectual property licensing assistant at UTA and a biomedical engineer by trade with three years of experience in university technology transfer. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you for joining us. And for guessing in the trivia, since we have a shy crowd, shy and small crowd, but I still feel you. Small but mighty. And volunteering at the last minute, which I very much appreciate. We have Dr. Peter Crouch, the Dean of Engineering, and I, I didn't get your bio in time, so can you just give me a quick little blurb? Electrical Engineering, 22nd year as a Dean somewhere. That's, that's impressive. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you so much for joining last minute. All right, five minutes and 28 seconds left. Five minutes can fly by. Audience, you guys who are paying attention, have you thought of what you might do with this, with this prompt? Any ideas of what you would do with math, vacuum molding machine, and rubber bands? We have a prior um, previous contestant here who I'm gonna ask and put on the spot. What do you think? Uh. I would probably, uh, since the discipline is math, 
you got the equipment is vacuum molding machine itself. Then you have rubber bands as your material. I would probably use the equipment and the material to set up different forms of uh, different forms of experiments that would give kids in a school hands-on uh, uh, experience for learning the difference between uh, suction and uh, all of the different applications that that has, uh, and while through the vacuum molding machine and then using rubber bands to teach them about tension and then give them opportunities to put those two things together. And yeah, that deserves a round of applause. You're like, yeah, I sort of have an idea. Bam, this is what I do. Appreciate that. That's very impressive. I don't think I could come up with that. I'm, an, uh, I'm a creative person. I would like paint an abstract version of what it looked like in my head. And you might not understand it. But to each his own. Thank you. That's awesome. Anybody else have any ideas of what they'd do for this prompt? No? It's a tough one. Oh, I did introduce myself in the beginning, but I'll do it again. <laughs> I don't mind. I'm Tessa White. <laughs> I work here at the libraries. I'm the service desk manager for... Oh, thank you, Sunday. Oh, guys, stop, stop. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I've been working here at UTA for the last couple years. I moved here from New York City, where I uh, performed and created art for about 11 years. So there, <laughs> there you go. Oh, thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. Gotta use it somehow. All right, Asami, we wanna take this moment to give a little startup lounge plug. Asami Nagakura is our strategic initiatives coordinator for the Startup Lounge, and she's gonna tell you a little bit more about that. She's also been a part of the planning team for POW, and just is a great popcorn and soda hostess. Hi, my name is Asami. I am, uh, whatever she said, at the Startup Lounge. Uh, at Startup Lounge, we have workshops and seminar series for entrepreneurs. You don't have to be a UTA student or faculty members. We are open to anybody who has entrepreneurship in mind. And we are having our seminar series today at 5.30. We are going over crowdfunding. So if you ever wonder how to, what to do, what not to do uh, uh, with crowdfunding, this is the seminar you want to um, come and attend. And we are going to have um, intensive workshop during the summer starting Jul the first week of Jul June. Um, it goes for seven weeks, three hours, one week, and it will be really great. Uh, we actually have a few companies um, launched that attended our last summer sessions, so you will learn a lot. Thank you, Asami. Yes, clap for her. She deserves all the applause, too. Teams, we're down to one minute and 24 seconds. Oh, <laughs> what are you going to do? For uh, you last-minute volunteers, uh, keep working, but um, I forgot to mention that everybody who participates today gets a $10 gift certificate to the, of their choosing from a list. I believe the list includes Amazon, Starbucks, Einstein Bros Bagels. Hey, you guys. Hey, thanks for the coffee. I'm going to come get one in like 20 minutes. Triple espresso iced. A <laughs> little bit of hazelnut. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and it also includes printing. If you want to do a printing, $10 in printing here, and um, some other campus service. But I can't remember, and Martin's preoccupied. But it's $10 of something cool. And our winners uh, will have the chance to compete next Wednesday. And the winning prize at the finals is a $50 gift certificate of your choosing. Fun, money, incentives, experience, learning, pow. <laughs> Just, you know, whatever. Whatever comes in my head is what comes out into the microphone. When I have time to kill, but I only have five, four, three, two, one. All right, time's up, teams. Time is up.
Can't wait to see what you came up with. The internet? Oh, no. Okay. Judges, keep in mind that we had an internet connection problem, so research was a little stilted. Don't hold it against them, is the request. All right, so this judging portion is going to last about 25 minutes. Each team will have five minutes, up to five minutes, no longer than five minutes, to present their pitch. We'll keep the timer here. And then, uh, judges, you'll have the opportunity to ask a clarification question per team. We're asking you to limit it to one question per team. And not one question per judge, one question per team. Right? We got a little carried away last week. All right, so we're, we don't necessarily need to start with team one. I do want to ask, though, you guys, um, as the other teams are presenting, please do not take that time to continue to polish your presentation as the other teams don't have that capability. So please pay attention to the teams as they're, as they're presenting, and uh, we'll get started. We ready to start? Okay. Are you guys ready to go? Yes. All right, team one, the killer cyborg beetles. Also, whoever takes the mic, whoever's speaking in the mic, make sure you hold it close up to your mouth, otherwise we're not going to be able to hear you. You can come around. All right, guys. The Killer Cyborg Beatles. Hey, guys. How's it going? Thank you. Um, we are the Killer Cyborg Beatles. And um, so, first of all, to begin, uh, who wouldn't want to help out the carbon footprint in the world today, right? So to introduce ourselves, uh, our company is named Flex, F-L-E-X. Our product is actually I-B-L-E, an acronym for Industrial Biodegradable Liquid Environment. And so our purpose is to exchange the plastic molding sheets, which are currently used in the um, molding machine, into sheets from rubber bands. Why rubber bands? Because they are inexpensive. They're made from recycled rubber. It could be from recycled tires, from any kind of recycled material, thus reducing the fossil footprint and energy and being energy efficient. So another advantage would be just uh, it, the, the resin that we're promoting is more flexible than the plastic uh, currently used today. So that actually would be applicable to any company that's actually making molds today to be industrialized and have a product that would be made over and over again, and uh, it actually is going to be easier for companies to introduce that to new employees because it's just at the press of the button you can make that mold made out of that rubber material made from that rubber rubber band. So thank you. You guys want to add anything at all? Okay, judges, do you have any clarification questions for Team One? What would you do about uh, products where you need to see through the, the, the rubber? Do you have uh, see-through rubber in, in your plants, perhaps? Hold on, Candy. Let me give you the mic, girl. Just like with scuba diving material, that is your clear rubber. It also lasts a lot longer, and it's stronger the clearer it is. Stronger the clearer it is. There's like double meaning or multiple meanings there. Stronger, clearer. Transparency, huh? All right. Uh, okay, so no more clarification questions. Team number two, are you guys ready to rock? All right, cool. Do you want to present from back there? Or is somebody going to come up here? If so, you can either awkwardly crouch or... Yeah, it should. I think you can swipe it over. Yeah, vacuum molding machine. Yeah, we got you over here. I don't, I'm not sure if it's your first slide. Clear eyes? Okay, good. Remember to hold the mic up close to your mouth. You guys all coming forward, lovely. The Beardy McBeardo faces. Ready? Hey, how's everyone doing today? Great, thank you. Good, good. Can I see every single one of you smile? Can you smile? 
Can you smile? Can you smile? Oh, he's got good teeth. Are y'all, you're smiling too. You got, uh, everybody got nice teeth. So what we have going right here is clear ice. You walk clear and you feel icy. You always feel fresh. You always feel good. Go to the next slide. What we're doing with the vacuum molding machine is we're doing one mold per month. Do you guys see what's on my teeth? What is that? Braces, right? I got braces on my teeth. I have to keep these braces on one year, two years, three years, depending how messed up my teeth are, how much I didn't take care of them. So what we have here is we're creating one mold per month. If you're like me and you have to keep braces on for two years, that means I need how many molds? Are you a math major? 24 molds. That's exactly what we need. But the question is, what does this machine even do? So the... The vacuum molding machine, what it does, it uses heat to create plastic, to mold the plastic into just about anything. So in our case, we're going to be molding this plastic into braces. So the cost of braces, me paying for these braces I have right here is I think around it was $4,800, $4,800, and they're not even the clear ones. So what we're creating is a molding that's clear, that's why the name is Clear Ice, and no one can see you have it on. It's like a retainer, exactly what I'm going to be wearing after these braces. And that cost, if you want to get it from the dentist, is how much? $8,000 per patient, which is extremely high in the sky. Do you know our cost is how much? $60 to create what we're trying to do. That gives us a huge margin of $7,000. The math major can answer the rest. Something dollars. And that's us playing with it. Now, you all know that dentists and doctors, they play around with the things. They know they can make this. But how are they going to make their money if they do it like this? You know that they have the treatments for cancer. But if they have the treatments, how are they going to make their money if they give it out to everyone? So we're in the same concept of what we are doing over here. You all see there is a true market for this. And you all see that there is a lot of money to be made in the industry that we are in. The math and our invention. It's distance of tooth divided by the maximum distance. So if my tooth has a 10-inch gap, which is huge, I'm going to measure 10 inches divided by how close I want them to come, and that's what gives us our formula for how we are going to use these Invisalign things. What are we going to do with these rubber bands? With rubber bands, um, so with regular braces, you would need rubber bands to hold the alignment together. So with ours, we'll just provide the patient with rubber bands. So for the last two months, it will get their teeth really straight. So at the end of their whole cycle of the two years, they will have really straight teeth, and they'll need they wouldn't need the um, our invention anymore because it's yeah. Thank you. Exactly what she said. I have brackets on top of here. I put a rubber band from the top to the back the last two months, and that brings all my teeth forward. And that's exactly what we're going to do with these rubber bands. So we have all these three things incorporated, and it's time to make money. So who wants to stay clear ice with our new straight teeth? Thank you. <laughs> awesome job, guys. Judges, do you have a clarification question for team two? You don't have to. This is your opportunity. All right. Well done, guys. Team three, the lucky poop emojis. Good luck. Your name says it. It says good luck in the form of, we, we've just, it's over. We're, we've talked it to death. I'm going to just be done with it. Are you guys ready? Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Faithful. This is Philip right here. And of course, that's our group, the lucky poop emojis. Uh, so first of all, we just want to talk about what the vacuum molding machine does, and we also apply to rubber and I mean to uh, plastic, and also rubber, and we'll go from there. So, um, so vacuum molding machine is how we form plastics uh, by heating them up to a certain temperature, and so you melt the plastic, and also. Can they, you are able to form them into something else. And so Philip is going to go from there. Uh, <coughs> um, rubber is a tough elastic pol uh, polymeric substance made from latex, la latex or tropical plant or synthetical. 
that's how they um, they get the rubber, and uh, for the rubber they use it to uh, make uh, tires, rubber bands, and stuff. Um, for us, we were thinking of um, recycling the rubber bands, like they use rubber to get, uh, you know, <coughs> the vegetables. They they rub vegetables and stuff. That's one of the use of uh, rubber. But um, for us, we wanted to recycle the rubber, and we can um, do this to prevent the exhaustion of the resources. You know, because they use the rubber rubber trees to extract rubber, so we want to recycle it, and um, so we can uh, use it to modify other products like um, making of uh, non-conductive uh, materials for electricity, uh, shock absorbers, uh, and things that are can uh, reduce the resources exhaustion. Okay, so like you heard from him, our major idea here is trying to recycle rubber. And how this goes is we try to treat rubber like it is a plastic because you can actually deform rubber, like you can deform by eating it up, heating it up, and so, and try to reform another shape, just like what the vacuum molding machine is intended to do. So we do that, and by this we intend to cut waste. Of course, they're already, uh, we already uh, recycle rubber and things like that, and cans and everything, but we, we intend to cut waste by, um, say by 50%, because then we don't have to create from raw materials. We just take whatever is already there and just recycle it and, and come up with whatever we want. So in this case, rubber bands, I guess, so, or any other thing we want to make, yeah. Uh, any questions? Judges, any clarification questions for team three? Can you, can you restate in one sentence what your product or service is? Um, so in one sentence, uh, in one sentence, we are, say we are a firm, a firm that is trying to recycle rubber. Thank you, team three. I'm going to stop saying your name because I'm just at my limit. <laughs> I'm, I, you know, there's a traditional girl inside. All right, so... That's it for our pitches. You guys did a great job. Round of applause for all three teams. This is our live polling that's happening. Viewers at home and here today are voting at pollev.com forward slash Martin Wallace, no E, 439. P-O-L-L-E-V dot com forward slash M A R T I N W A L L A C 439. Get your votes in. The judges are formulating their votes. We're going to give them a couple of minutes or so to do their magic and come up with the winner. Once the winner is decided amongst the judges, our live polling will be frozen. We had a little issue last week with the timing of the call. So we're calling it now. Once the judges decide, we freeze the live poll. Exciting. Are you guys voting? Yeah, it's right here. Pollev.com forward slash Martin Wallace 439. But the Wallace does not have an E. P O L L E V dot com forward slash M A R T I N W A L L A C 439. Don't put a camera in front of me and expect me not to pose. Don't make me sing. Everybody here at the party is asking me to sing. Anyone know that reference? Kristen Wig, SNL? All right, live polling, getting exciting, getting close, fluctuating. Do you want to say anything about next week or add any fun tidbits here, Martin? If you guys don't know Martin Wallace, he's the mastermind behind this and has carried off all of the logistics and worked very hard over the last 
couple of few months and I think he deserves a round of applause while the judges are still judging. Let's do it. <laughs> and you passed out candy too. There's no end to what you'll do to help the POW cause. How are we doing judges? Are we getting close? In one more minute or so? You getting that vote in, Antoinette? That was <laughs> kind of the time allotted. Okay. Okay. So we're in agreement? Yes. Okay. Winner is locked. No more, vo no more live voting. So the audience actually doesn't, the live voting doesn't determine the winner unless there is a tie between the judges which is what happened last week. But this week, that is not the case. There's a clear winner amongst the judges, and that winner is Team Two, the Beardy McBeardo Faces. <laughs> Yay, Team Two. Awesome job, you guys. So you'll come back next week, same time, same place, and compete for the winning prize. Judges, can you um, just take a moment to give feedback to our winning team, but also all three teams? Yeah, I'll say that I, I like the, uh, the uh, eco theme of both uh, teams uh, one and three, so uh, good job on that. And uh, of course, you know, team one, I think, had a, a little bit more refined thought process you know, behind the, uh, the engineering of it. And of course, uh, team two is to be congratulated on the polished uh, presentation and the thought processes and the communication and the teamwork. You know, so. Team two was the uh, only one who had an obvious use of math. Yeah, all three teams had uh, different focuses, and I really, I really liked all. But um, team two had a very clear view of what you guys did, and you had a good blend of all the three concepts, and you presented it really well. So that I guess that's what made you guys the winner. Thanks, all three teams, for presenting it to us. Thank you, judges. You guys, awesome job. Congrats, team two. We'll see you next week. Team one and three, thank you for your hard work. I'm Tessa White. I'll see you next week. Come for the finals, April 26, 12 p.m. Bye.